Megalovox OST. So, KRK. Um, sort of have a shitty reputation, at least in audiophile circles, because, well, I think I gave it to them. I mean, I'm not going to personally claim responsibility, but when I shot out the uh, JBL versus the KRK is like four years ago in my old apartment, um, it was blatantly obvious that the JBLs were just superior speakers. And the KRKs were, oh, we have a yellow cone, we do bass. And that was the fucking end of it. So fast forward to 2022. Digital DJ here was nice enough to hook me up with um, the five inch, the six and a half, and the eight inch version of the new generation four KRKs. And I actually heard these um, at the Deconi offices. And I was like, oh, oh, oh. In fact, I did a video there comparing the threes and the fours. The threes were the older generation that I actually listened to, and the fours were the new ones, these new ones with the very, very pokeable, ooh, it's so pokeable tweeter. And, um, Right now, this is going to be an unbridled praise for those of you who watch Mauler. Um, but we're going to move up. We're going to go from the fives to the six and a halves to the eights. And I'm going to tell you if there's a, a, a difference, a real reason to get either or. Because here's the thing. Um, $189 each. The bigger ones, $224 each. And the biggest ones in that white, which we'll talk about the white, $269 each. So there's not even a $100 difference between the biggest and the smallest per per but still that's a that's a very small margin so like if you're like me and you're like we'll just get the biggest one obviously the biggest one's the best one let's find out um just want to thank also everyone who's following me on in your fetish which is my new im channel it's down there somewhere and uh for all my ten dollar patrons if you're in my patreon or subscriber stuff for ten dollars a month you get to message me directly talk in a group chat with everyone it's super helpful right now in 2022 so all my ten dollar patrons hi guys how are you doing um they all know this is all got set up i take pictures you know as it happens anyway so i've got the smsl su10 here feeding them which is a new DAC, and this has actually got its review coming up soon and i'm just shuffling through tracks on this and Oh, also, I'm I'm sort of doing a, a callback to this speaker is upside down. Relax, everybody. This is not... If you're new to Z-Reviews, and I mean within the last two or three years, you're probably very confused. One of the things that I pioneered was the fact that I don't give a fuck if a speaker's right set up. I want to put it in a place where the tweeter height is perfect with my ears, and if the woofer is above or below, it, it shouldn't make a difference. And in fact... Getting it further away from a desk, even if it's a desk covered with a nice soft foam material and on stands on top of others, and just, this is fine. If this, flipping it upside, if I took the stands away, I could have them right side up, and then we're gonna have too much. It's a thing, putting your speakers up and down is a free fucking tip you could use and see if it sounds better. Because once you do that, now you don't have sound all clumped up down here at your keyboard level. You get this sort of like, ooh, front-facing arch of sound. So if you don't like them upside down, too fucking bad, try it. Try it with your speakers, see if it makes a difference. You always wanna keep that tweeter at like your level. Like right here, like this space, that's like the, that's like the perfect line. The perfect line. If I flip them over, then the, then the perfect line's up here, it's above my head, don't want it. And if I take them off the stands and they're closer to the surface, there's a whole fucking series of rants I can make on this. Anyway, I really only have to look at the back of one of them because they've all shared the exact same uh new system which is that there is now a digital screen on the back of this one of the reasons these are superior to the three is not because the screen is digital that would be dumb you see how this is coming out on the camera actually actually that's pretty good um it's not the fact that the screen is digital because i mean you can get it, pull out any uh self-powered monitors and usually switches in the back you go, a little more bass, a little less bass, a little more treble, a little less treble, and you adjust, adjust the uh, decibels to match, and you're good. With an actual, legit, high-resolution DSP room tuning on the back of it, it means that these speakers, I know, are being DSP corrected. With with JBLs, like JBL uh, LSR 305s or 305Ps would be more likely the ones, it switches still. And yes, it might be affecting a DSP that's built into the unit, but you can't... Like, you don't know, and, and then this. So, you have your balance, you have your, actually it's a, um, a multi-input. It will do XLRs, it'll do uh, TRS. I don't know if it'll, 
do TS also, it should. So if you wanted to plug an unbalanced RCA input into this, if you want to just hook your turntable up to it for some reason, um, I'll link the adapters in the description of that. So you get uh, that, a screen, and a volume knob. And the volume knob is a pushy volume knob. You hit it, and we see it says EQ and setup and back. So if we go back, this is the main screen. It's a little bit slow, kind of like playing an old school Donkey Kong. Um, you get your volume, which is what it defaults to, and it's digital, so you know when you set it to zero, 0, 0.0 decibels, and you set that one to 0, 0.0 decibels, they're the same. Doesn't necessarily mean you should leave them there. If you're sitting, setting up and you even your, maybe your source has got slightly different variations of voltages, or maybe that's closer to a wall, causing it to be louder because it's hitting a wall and coming at you double, so you may have to lower that one down or raise this one up. Having an accurate volume control is a huge step because on a regular monitor you're just like i don't know lower next track next track, higher next track next track nah. so you get an, an accurate volume control that goes in tenths of a decibel increment all the way up to 11. so these are one of the few speakers i could tell you that you can actually turn the fucking thing up to 11 which is kind of wild it actually responds pretty well to going fast like i was just doing let's get it back to zero plus one plus three, two, zero. So you could see there's an actual, uh, it looks like you're gonna be able to EQ this, like, oh, it's got 40 hertz and 60 hertz and 200 and 1K and 3,500 and 10,000. I'm gonna be able to control it and EQ. You can't, we're not that far along yet. These are still not the highest NKRKs. There are higher NKRKs. I'll see if I can get a hold of some of those. So if we go into the push button menu, go to EQ and you basically have two selections, on, three selections on top. Low EQ, high EQ, and back. And back obviously doesn't help you. But we go to low EQ and press it, you now have a choice of six things. So instead of having a switch that's just less bass, more bass, you have flat, which is zero, and then you have, how do I describe this? All right, so you have low shelf, negative three decibels at 60 hertz, or low shelf, negative two decibels at 60 hertz, or, uh, L P E Q negative two decibels at 200 hertz, or negative two decibels L P E Q at 200 hertz. Also, why are four? Oh, oh, I'm sorry. So, okay, so that's one does one thing, two does two changes. It does the P E Q and the low shelf. Then you have flat. Then you have just the L P E Q negative two 200, and then L shelf negative plus two 60 hertz for like a bass boost. But you can do that if you push one of those in, it now displays what it's doing here. So you can at least walk to the back of any monitor or hold your phone with the screen off and use it as a mirror. I've done that a hundred times, I don't know if you have. And just see, okay, I have this monitor set this way. So we put that on there, then we can go to the high EQ and it's the same thing. You get five different settings here. I think it's only five, it doesn't go down to six. So you have the high shelf, negative two, with 10,000 hertz and you got the high shelf with the parametric equalization at 10K and 3.5, then flat. Then another one with double high shelf plus one, parametric equalization one plus one, and then high shelf plus two at 10K. So you can, I'm not gonna play with the, actually, you know what? Let's bump the highs up with, with that. So then you have like a little, a little bump at 3,500 and a, a raise is on up to 20,000. And those are the two settings you get to play with. But it's not just bass boost, treble boost. It's you're actually adding any number of adjustments along the entire frequency path. You can't customize them. That would be something you would do in a, a preamp or a DAC or something on your source. But holy shit, that's automatically better than like 99% of the powered monitors I've been able to play with ever in my life. So now let's go to setup, because that was the end of equalization. And the setup has basic setup things. Backlights on this, which still has a cover over it. You know what, I'm gonna leave that on there for you guys. Um, you can set the backlight lower than 100, you click in, you can adjust, to make this nice and dark. It actually is a little slow for these things, but you can just, from, from I think it goes to zero. It goes to 0%, which is basically, it's still there, but I can't quite read it to one, to two, to three, to four, a hundred and one different levels of brightness because it has zero and a hundred as levels of brightness. Don't need that. Would've been fine if it jumped five decibels, five percent increments, but it has every hundred. And it's the same thing for contrast. 
it'll go 69% contrast versus 68. So obviously we want 69% contrast, and that's the contrast of the screen. And then you have um, two options, standby, on or off, which means the speaker will actually go to sleep. If you're going to like use these, and there's nothing wrong, listen to me, listen to me, people. There's nothing wrong if you have a television in your living room, and I recommend all sorts of the Swan speakers and the Anifier speakers, remote controls and everything. If you had a decent DAC, and all you need is a DAC with a remote control that has pre-outs in the back of it, you could then use the bounce outputs or even RSA outputs of any cheap DAC and put real, real legit fuck you powered monitors, studio monitors on the left and right of your television and use it at, if someone can't afford a home theater, instead of buying the cheapest shit home theater with, with plastic speakers, you buy a decent DAC. I think uh, SMSL or Topic makes one with a remote control for like $110. And then you could buy any powered monitors you want. I'm on a bouncy ball, can you tell? Um, and if you do that, you can then put them on standby so when you go to bed at night, you could just leave it alone, shut off your DAC, or leave it on because it doesn't matter, it doesn't use enough electricity to concern yourself. And these will just go click off. So, and then the, the most important thing, logo on off. So in the front of this, Look, there is a little acrylic window with the KRK Systems logo, and you can turn it off. This would be probably very useful if you're using these on a computer desk, and you're doing some sort of like horror game, and you don't want to have in the peripheral, in your periphery, two bright white, and they're pretty white, they're pretty white. Wow, words, we'll figure them out. Um, if you don't want to have those, you can either dim it to half brightness, which is actually subtle and nice or turn it off entirely that's great there are so many fucking pieces of equipment i wish i could just turn the goddamn lights off i don't even hate this one it's not like a blue led like some things a blue fucking led and a blue led on and then you have factory reset lock which you press it it's now locked and to unlock it so if i locked it and i go back then i go in here then I have, to, I have to go in and hit unlock. It's not very secure. That's like having a lock on your luggage that just says, I'm locked. And to unlock it, you have to go, no. And then unlock it. So it's not like for babies. It's just so that if you're moving them around or fiddling with them, you don't accidentally mess the setting up. So then we hit back, and then we're done, and we hit back, and we're done. And we've got this weird, we've got a bass boost, and we've got the 3.5 boost and a 20K boost. Let's see how long it takes me to make that happen on this set as well. Which, the one thing about running them upside down is now that they're upside down and they don't recognize that. Oh, I can also show you the bottom. Um, we'll look at the build completely while I do this. But there's a nice foam sheet at the bottom. So we'll leave our volume at zero. Go to EQ, low EQ. Boost that shit. Where's my boost at? All right. Now we're going to go to high EQ. I'm going to do that. And that's it. We're done. Unless I want to go to setup and change the contrast from 70 to 69. And then we can hit back. And back. There you go. We've just uh, literally made, duplicated it. And I know because it's digital that I'm not, I'm not fussing around with like, oh, if there's a, even if there's a knob to adjust a correction, like how, how accurately can you honestly turn the knob before you're just like, I guess this is the same. This is the same. You obsessive compulsive folks should fucking respect the hell out of that. So. Alex Claire, hands are clever. I really, you know what? I'll pick up one of the bigger ones because we're going to swap to them in a bit. But the build is essentially the same on all three of them. This is just bigger. So you have a slightly yes, less pronounced yellow cone. And I saw this firsthand comparing the, G the Gen 3 or the Gen 4. <coughs> I feel like KRK, one of their main selling points was the looks. And honest to God, I don't like the fact that they dulled this yellow. It used to be bold and brash and old college kids are like, I gotta get drunk and hammered in front of my KRKs because they're so yellow. And now it's like, eh, it's nice. It's a, it's a weave. Uh, I don't know what the Kevlar weave, I'm sure. And um, it's not ugly. 
Well, it's less ugly than the threes. The threes had some really weird shapes going on if you compare the, look them up online. And then here's where the main difference is. The threes, the Gen 3, try to point that down. The Gen 3 threes tweeter was a big soft dome and it was recessed about an inch into a very, very conical waveguide. And that made it a very focused sound. It shot forward like a shotgun. And that's probably why well, that would be why it lost in the treble wars against JBL. It lost in the bass wars because it was just a bass fucking monster. It was blah, 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 blah. But this new tweeter, which I said at the beginning was very pokeable. Look how poke... I just want to touch this button, the forbidden button. I just want to push the button. Is in a, a disassembled or detached waveguide. I think it's just a, a, cre a crevice here. And it's got the slightest little, little angle on this bevel. And then it just sits almost flush with the unit. Look, it almost sticks out past. And what that allows it to do is it allows it to spread. And so while I'm here, way off axis of that, I still see 100% of the of tweeter. Tweeter is not going anywhere, not in, the, not in the slightest. It's just, I can just visually see it. So that gives it a much cleaner platform to try to reproduce sound in a wider array. So how you beat JBL is you you don't copy them, you just stop fucking crippling yourself, which is what KRK was doing. The threes had a terrible tweeter design. Like it was like sucked way back into the unit, like they wanted it to kind of like, no. No, shove that shit as far forward as you can and make it a better tweeter. And then DSP correct it so you don't have any fucking weird node or lobe issues. All right, I... I Give me a second. I'm going to swap out and then we'll talk about all three of them when I'm done. Uh, time codes, by the way. Check that. All right. So, so switching from the four to the six and a half or the five to the six and a half, much bigger profile. You could just see that they're bigger, little, little baby ones versus big ones. And um, initially I was like, oh, they're about the same volume. And then I realized that the one I plugged in was actually down 12 decibels from zero. So I made sure it was on zero decibels. I cleared out any EQ adjustment because these are a used set of speakers. And um, yeah, so these, I think, I'm just gonna give my first assessment. I would only go with the five inch version if you have limited space. Because already, just the on a flat EQ versus what that had with a little bit of boost, these are producing lower lows. Somehow, I think clearer highs, and here's what I'm thinking. Because you're changing the driver size, just because that tweeter is the same as that tweeter, which is the same as that tweeter, all three tweeters are the same. But every unit has a bigger driver. It gets bigger and bigger and bigger. And having it balance, having the same thing and then balancing it through the DSP it's just a much more natural fit on this set of KRKs. And we are talking about like, this is professional monitor levels of good. I hadn't even considered KRK for the longest time because it's like, no, 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 no. Only you know, drunk assholes who love bass buy those. You could actually master on these now. You could adjust for your room with the, with the EQs in the back. And if I'm just sitting here enjoying Ellie Goulding Salt skin. That's fucking clean, bro. Like, that's the words that come into my head, all right? Because I feel like I'm talking to the KRK audience and we're under the bleachers at some community college and we all just took a hit of the fucking pong. And it's like, bro, listen to me, man. Don't keep those old G3s. Those old KRKs are fucking lame. These are the real deal. These are the real deal. The actual adult humans that do work on speakers for mixing and mastering could now officially buy these and not be committing a cardinal sin. I'm giving you the, I'm giving the okay. I haven't even gone up to the eights yet, but holy, the fucking difference is already miles, miles better. Just, I'm listening, and again, the speakers are upside down, so to keep the tweeter height, I'm gonna probably, when I put the big ones, I'll take the extra stands out. These, by the way, including what this is on here, these are all Canto stands. Um, Canto makes a load of fucking stands, like more stands than speakers. So I got a little baby stands that I'm gonna give to my sister, because she needs them for her television. And then this one, which is like a standoff stand, but I just, it's great to have like, like space. It's, it's kind of like the sound dry stands, but these are steel, so they're a million pounds. Um, 
I want you to know that I can feel, this is at flat EQ. I am feeling KMFDM's virus from the Johnny Mnemonic soundtrack, from the, the Johnny Mnemonic soundtrack in my fucking ankles. I mean, we're down 5 dB here, but I'm going to wait till I get to the bigger ones before I absolutely sign off on this. Because I just said pretty fucking firmly that these are now a serious contender for a great set of actual usable studio monitors. But I'm playing them kind of loud. Louder than you would if you were mixing or mastering music. And I'm playing them with no bass boost. So I'm going to I'm gonna switch to the, the big ones. And I'm going to see if I can get those to be as good as these are for just clean, precise, neutral mastering. And then maybe also still kick some ass from for like a party college guy perspective, because that wouldn't suck if it did that. So now we're here with these. And before I begin, I want to say that the old yellow cone would not have worked with a white. And I'm, I got to point this out. This isn't white. I also got to point out that this is more white than this. So the plastic part in the front of this doesn't match. This has got like a greenish hinge to tinge to it versus the like much more white, but yet still like an off white. And the color scheme with the black and the yellow and the like the tan gray green and then the like the, the, the it doesn't really work a hundred percent. My my uh, my girl Pasta, Princess Pasta, you can follow her online. Um, she like gagged in the unboxing of these because she did the unboxing of these. It was one of those unboxings that got lost and I only have like broken clips of it, but I got the entire audio of it. And <laughs> she, as a person who like enjoys like beautiful hand, oh God, I'm falling down, beautiful handcrafted wood and like like these shapes and, and like all oh, the finish. You throw this near someone who's got any sort of taste and they're going to be like, Nah, fam, I ain't down. What hurts it probably the most is the fact that it's just the same yellow on yellow. It's a lighter yellow. If it was a darker yellow, that would be even worse. But it's like... Mm. By the way, the KRK logo gets bigger in every series, I think. Yeah, every single one, they made the acrylic larger. They didn't cheap out. But that look, those looks, those looks, you're going to... I mean, here's the thing. If you're a person who wants light and airy, this is fine. I can live with them. I can live with them. You know why I can live with them? There was a time I used to look into my father's eyes. Okay, that's fucking stupid. Now, I will say they're not running the stock flat EQ. The whole reason for that EQ is not so you can tune it to your tastes. It's to tune it to your space. Now that I've flipped them right side up and the bass is lower and there, by the way, I didn't point out, although I think you could probably figure it out, there's the port. It is a fucking massive storage space for like notebooks and gerbils and whatever else you want to shove in there. All three of them have it in the front. A front ported powered monitor usually means you get a little bit better presentation. It doesn't matter if you put it closer to a wall. It was one of the reasons I set up these particular KRKs or those when I was doing the Dakoni office setup, which is available on my second channel. If you haven't found my second channel, which is different from my IM channel, which is different than the unboxing channel, which is different from the cooking consortium videos, I have lots of channels. Please check my link tree. You will not find an OnlyFans because they wouldn't give me one. Sons of bitches. Anyway, because it's front ported and because that's an eight inch, the very first thing I did was unpause, went, wow, these are super loud compared to those and compared to those. And then went, there's too much bass. It's old KRK bass. So I went behind it and I enabled this equalization curve. Drop everything, 200 Hertz I went down, I went 40 Hertz down, kill it, kill it. It's too much bass for this space. We are doing room correction, not personal opinion correction here. And once I did that, I'm like, you know, excellent, fucking great. I'm going to do something else now, though, because I was listening to a few songs, and I think the treble, let's leave the low shelf, let's take the high one, and let's pop that down the very top one, just just a, a little, like one, like two decibels, two dB. Because what's happening is they're using the same tweeter on all three of them, and they're trying to balance them, 
but they're turning this one up because that little tweeter has got to now compete with this to try to make sound come forward. And I'm only like four and a half feet away. So EQ, do ding. That's it. We don't even have to back. You don't even have to leave that menu. You just leave it. Let's go back to Post Mountain Jukebox. Don't you worry, child. Uh, vintage Great Gatsby style from Post Mountain Jukebox. Blah, 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 blah. Place in a happy home. Perfect. That little bit, that little bit of sparkle that was a little bit too much is gone now. I'm just gonna... These feel like an eight inch self-powered amazing speaker within nearly arm's reach. I, I've backed up a bit just for safety reasons. I'm just like constantly rolling my giant 3000 pound yoga ball a little bit further back. Just, just give myself some space. Could you use them closer? Probably. Do you want to? Maybe if you lowered them down like... All right. No matter how I adjust them, no matter how I tweak them, getting them cl like close is a bueno no. Non, non bueno. The six and a half works way better in a close environment. I know some of you people are gonna be like, but Zios, I just want the biggest fucking speakers. Can I buy these? Yes, you can. If you can take your desk, grab it and slide it back like here. Now I could easily use these. I could even move them further apart if I wanted to. And I'm using them at like, I was using the five inch at like eight, negative eight. Then I was using the six and a halves at negative 12. Now I'm at negative 20. So the amount, these things aren't, aren't using, they're using the exact same menu in the back. I have to show it to you three times. But the power scaling or the efficiency because you're going bigger and bigger and bigger driver, the bigger the driver, the less power it takes to make the same amount of volume. And these are making much more volume than the other ones. Probably. And I will, I will say this, if I take off the base cut that I put on these, which has now made them like perfectly neutral again, same as the other ones, perfectly neutral, um, you can have that old school KRK, holy fuck, what did you do? In fact, you know what? Give me a second. I'm gonna go edit them again. Let's make them base stupid and see what happens. All right, I've given some shuffling and I haven't heard this yet. Tower of God soundtrack, fucking phenomenal anime, by the way. Can't wait for season two. Um, Kevin Penkin, the track Rachel, who's one of the most beautiful and loving. We love Rachel. If you watch Tower of God, you'll know why. Um, anyway, I've got it coming up right now, and I've heard some of the other tracks with the two only a two decibel. We went from like two decibel drop of bass to make it sort of like neutral for what I felt like it was, to now a two decibel boost. So that's four decibels of bass. And I'm gonna tell you while yelling so I don't get a copyright infringement on this video. Yeah, no, that's dumb. We're, we're back to... Battery died, and so I went away, and then I came back, and I kept listening, and I'm like, oh, what if I put on the Red Line OST? Oh, fuck. So, um, yeah, I don't think... As much as I'm like, all right, you can actually get these down to flat and neutral and use them professionally, I don't think there's many other speakers, eight inch wise. The only other ones I could think of that I like for different reasons than this would be my my beloved Fluid FX80s, which is also an eight inch, but a coaxial eight inch. But I don't think they'll drop the bass as hard as these will, when you ask it to. Here's the thing, this is not currently set up correctly. I have the treble dropped, I have the bass boosted. We are now officially back into old school KRK mode, and it still sounds better than every KRK I've ever listened to before this series. So, it's just a, a big bwom bwom bwom. Dirty cell, Dirty yeah! Cell, yeah! Cell, yeah! Cell, yeah! <laughs> Yeah, no, rat tat tat. This is the eights are a banger. The sixes are your best bet, and the fives only if you have limited space. That's the way I would go about this. I would absolutely endorse the eights if you got the space and if you want to party with them. The six and a halves for doing like almost everything else. 
and the fives just fall a little bit short. Just to, just they're better than the old fives ever were. And I'd probably probably just I feel like the the JBLs would still do a better balance of low end with the fives. With the six and a halves, complete toss out. I would abs I would endorse six and a halves. And then the eights are for rock and roll up. I can't. I would love to. I, I, I gotta find a platform I could just play music on, and then I'd probably get sued directly and instead of YouTube. YouTube is a good buffer. They get yelled at, and then I get yelled at from YouTube. Where if you go somewhere else and start streaming music, you get yelled at directly, and then you have to hire lawyers. So I don't mind if it's like copyright infringement. Oh my god, because YouTube deals with it. But at the same time, I want to fucking just play music. <laughs> Because this is the fun part. I should be a radio DJ. But then, again, you'd have to be an official radio DJ with a place that has lawyers and licenses. So that's no fun. I want to just play, what is this, Gangstar from the original Blade soundtrack. Here comes the revolutionist, executionist, flip a triple. That is such a, it literally is shaking the floor. And the floor is concrete, so I don't know how it's doing that. But it is. It's it's making the thump thumps go wub wub. So yeah, I'm gonna end on this. If you like the looks of the white ones, I think all three are available in either white or black. I, I don't hate the white ones. I just understand people's problems with the colors not matching and but at least it's it doesn't feel like it's giant coffins staring at you. Like a lot of black speakers just look like death. It's something white and airy. It's it's not great. But you can get a magic marker and draw all over this one, and it'll actually come out in your little, little rainbows and butterflies and shit. Be great. Anyway, available at um, uh, digitaldjgear.com. Thank you for sending them out. They said I can keep one, I think. It's like, yeah, we'll give you three, but you, you can keep the one you like the most. It'll probably be the six and a halves. Uh, it'll probably be the six and a halves. These are fucking hoot nanny, but they're in that color, and then they're, they're just they're so big, and I can never use them. But I think the, I think the six and a halves would actually find a place for demonstration and comparison purposes. Anyway, links to those, uh, links to all of these, links to this SU10 DAC, which by the way has gold feet. SMSL getting fancy over here. Links to some Canto stands. That wallpaper available in the horde, which was refreshed mid late September. So if you couldn't get the you the YouTube the review wallpaper horde thing to work, try again. Delete whatever you've got in there. Reclick the link in the description. Um, don't forget to check out the second channel that has random uh, re-reviews and software reviews and my mini split install videos going up on it. Check out I Am Fetish or In Ear Fetish, which is my I Am channel. It's dedicated to that. Uh, there might be a sponsor link, a generic sponsor link at the top of this video. If there is, check that out because that's going to be happening from now until the end of time um, because that's how 2022 has been doing. And in the interim... <laughs> Maybe I would keep the eights. Patreon subscribers to support this channel. Uh, participate in yard sales. Uh, maybe let me keep a set. I will yard sale it just because patrons give you something to buy. Uh, from the first cents of every month, I sell a bunch of shit, whether it's been here or donated or something or other. I just don't need it anymore. Check that out. I ship internationally, by the way. Um, you get to see these reviews early for $5 a month, and you will get to listen to lots of sound demos. Unless those sound demos become completely on there, then it'll be the only place to listen to sound demos. Again, YouTube, being YouTube. Uh, like I said at the beginning of the video, for $10 a month, you can get the private behind the scenes Telegram chat, which also, I should have mentioned, brings you into a lifetime swap meet channel where you can buy, sell, and trade gear with other members. And Hi Fi Guides and the Hi Fi Guides form still exist. Please check those out. Great little audio resources going there. You want to have a problem? If you could check out my subreddit. Again, if you go to my my link tree, it's all in there. It's all in the link tree. Just not a, not an OnlyFans. I really wanted that OnlyFans. Oh. All right, what do you think, Android 18? Her hair is more blonde than those are now. So it sort of ruined it.